<laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Today we're discussing two more episodes, or three more episodes, actually, uh, Twilight Zone. And first one, we, how say it? we have it in depth, actually, how, how can I say it? We borrow it from the previous class, right? The first episode. Yes. Yeah. It was it was postponed from the previous class. Yeah. yeah, it was postponed. So let's do it before we forget the story. <laughs> <laughs> because it was one week ago, and the name is the monsters. The monsters are you on Maple Street. Hmm. Well, what what does mean are you? What does it mean? How are you? you? I think are uh, expected to be expected or something like that. Good, good. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure, but I, I see the teacher is nodding. That, that's me. That <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> Could you because start? I, um, yeah. when I was a student, I was uh, just uh, I made a mistake about this, and then I learned that when I was a student at university. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Could you start, Leila, with the first question, please? Of course, initial reaction. The residents of Maple Street insurance. Okay, um, I can tell you first there was this bright um atmosphere, right? Bright, everywhere is so bright, and then a kind of um voice, noise, in fact. But people, um, first they lead you know such a normal day at first. This doesn't surprise them a lot but when they realize that the telephones are not working mm -hmm. and the power is off uh, they gather together they just react to um the powers of and telephones not working part yeah yeah because it is all of a sudden everything yeah. Mm -hmm. What what did you think at this moment? Was it alien technology or something? Oh, uh, I didn't think of the aliens, but I thought it could be something wrong with the electricity system first. Or I said maybe it's the weather, you know, just mm -hmm. a kind of thunderstorm is on the way or something like that. Okay, so we so something extraordinary just happened, right? Something supernatural, something that we don't understand, right? So no more uh, electric devices, uh, everything is broken, right? The, that's kind of the background of the story. And what's yeah. the what's the what's the first reaction of the of the people? I mean, this goes on and on, and the people. Uh, gather together and they start to accuse each other, right? Uh, but I don't want to tell the whole story. Maybe it's the second question. The little boy who was really interested in science fiction cartoons. Um, do you want me to go on? As, as, as you wish. As you wish, please. Uh, I don't mind, but I don't want to... You know, just um, my friends also has to talk. Yeah. Okay. So we know we know the background now, right? We know about initial reaction, as Leila said. Everyone is suspicious, right? <laughs> Stepping on. No one. You know what I told that at that moment? I said, "Okay, oh my God, this is the herd psychology." Literally, can I say bandwagon effect? What effect? Bandwagon. Bandwagon effect. Now we don't say that, but it, it's the same idea. One one boy says maybe it's this, and somebody else jumps on his bandwagon, yeah. and everybody jumps on the bandwagon, and everybody's going down the wrong road. Yeah. Teacher, yeah. can I say hurt, hurt, or hurt psychology? H e r d. Hurt psychology. We call it. We call it. Heard maybe group we call it group hysteria is what we call it okay. because <laughs> it happens a lot here. Yeah. Say heard hysteria, people will probably understand. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, Nesma, could you please help us with the second question? Yes, paranoia and fear. How does paranoia escalate on Maple Street, and what are the consequences of the residents' suspicion? and fear. 
I guess uh, I guess there is one important point about this theory, um, which is when people are afraid of something, they are uh, the, uh, their weakest version. They can be manipulated so easily that they can follow the weakest the weakest scenario that they I ever hear. I uh, I imagine that uh, on their normal uh, days they wouldn't uh, believe a boy, right? But now because they are so afraid, they are so worried, they have no trust to anybody of them. They can believe anything. This is a perfect time for having superstitions and following. Uh, I don't know if we can call it legends or myths or rituals, right? Something. Like yes, uh, yes, myths. So they are. Uh, uh, they are. So many of them are just like animals. They are following their instinct for the survival. They can do anything. They can kill one another for just suspicion. Mm -hmm. And um, they are uh, a way of, of having any wisdom. Um, only strong, very strong people can uh, still recall uh, their wisdom and their uh, mind on, on such situations. So I, be I believe they were manipulated. Maybe there was uh, nothing uh, abnormal or paranormal. Uh, they were just afraid. They were just, uh, they had no trust. Uh, this is, uh, the, that, that was the main cause of chaos uh, that uh, happened there. Yeah, do, do, do you think it's related to some kind of stress, you know, that people don't behave normally under the stress, they kind of make stupid decisions and everything. So I think it's something similar. What do you think? Yeah, uh, maybe more than stress, because we are having stress every day. But uh, the, the what they had uh, was uh, feelings danger. Yeah. They are now uh, seeking survival. Yes, yeah, so they're scared, right? They're scared of something they cannot comprehend and it makes them to be totally illogical, right? So to try to find a way to explain things, right? So it all happens because it's your fault. <laughs> but, and I will kill you and I will fix everything. Yeah. And also even unknown things are happening. The car starts itself. Exactly, exactly. It was not uh, something that easy to explain, right? It's not something that is your usual Monday. <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah. want, I want to add just one more thing. Uh, yeah. Maybe if I w watched uh, this series like five years ago, I would say that uh, the message is uh, don't believe the, uh, you know, the theory. Uh, what was it? <laughs> uh, like... Uh, People are manipulating you. Don't follow people like that and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are living in hard times that, yes, uh, there would be people that are manipulating us. There are uh, so many people that causing problems uh, on purpose. We are set up sometimes. Uh, the problems we are having were prepared sometimes. So it's really confusing nowadays. It's it's really unlike in the past. Yeah, if you well, know what I mean. There are so many new terms, right? Have you have you heard something like gaslighting? You know, so people <laughs> people kind of making new ways to play with each other, right? To manipulate each other. So it's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tishili, what is a pizza gate? I'm 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 curious. Pizza gate in the USA you wrote. Not long ago. Some social media, I think either a newspaper article or social media accused this pizza place, pizza fast food place. Someone accused them of, you know, supporting Palestine or something like that. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, people started sabotaging and and defacing that restaurant. And it wasn't even true. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy's restaurant was almost destroyed just because of some accusation on social media and everybody jumped on the bandwagon and said evil place evil evil you know <laughs> and in in india if Basath can probably uh confirm this but he's not here i don't guess 
in India one time, somebody on social media said, oh, this guy's a bad guy. He raped a woman. And other people on social media said, let's get kill that bastard. And a bunch of people actually attacked that guy. And I don't know if he got killed or not. I can't remember. But it's just it's mass paranoia. It's mass hysteria. It happens. Yeah. Sergey, yeah. <clears throat> do you want to something? Yes, I would like to add about the pizza gate and i like uh the moment when uh other scandal other theory of something uh name gate like a watergate scandal <laughs> and uh, and not only uh not only uh us in the russia we have the name the similar name gate uh, because the watergate uh, was a very famous scandal I, I like this moment, Pizza Gate, something Gate, and uh, the uh, ending of this word Gate uh, to uh, uh, help to understand uh, that this is a scandal, uh, that is a very secret something, and the other people understand immediately uh, uh, about it. And uh, uh, following the uh, explaining from uh, 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 from Leila about uh, uh, modern uh, society, I think that now we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, tools for sharing theory of something because we have the internet. And uh, I think that in the past we have the uh, similar amount of crazy uh, people, but uh, this amount couldn't uh, share this these ideas every time, everywhere. Now those people. Uh, could share this idea uh, due to the internet. Yeah, every every crazy person can post in the Twitter, right? So, so it's, yep. <laughs> it's very very messy. Uh, but Leila, Nesma, do you understand what we what we are talking about about Watergate scandal? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, very okay. very common Watergate. Yeah. Good. Well, we are very very well educated. I would say. I was just. <laughs> just I mean, a... To suggest Ivan, a movie about what Ivan, a... Ivan, yeah. one day I'm going to ask you a question. Whose answer you cannot find? I am what? going to try, but I can't. You know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher Lee keeps uh, posting everything that happens in the wo world in the group. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what we have to start reading more newspapers. Very good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. also Sergey he's so intelligent I am sometimes I took notes while he was speaking Gerard also yes. oh my god I feel so bad so, so Sergei, Gerard knows everything <laughs> yeah so Sergei, yeah yeah you're saying even in Russian they add this word something on the end to indicate a scandal all the time now yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if something huge happens if something that you know that change the situation the kind of normal ways right that reveal kind of some secrets or something it's gate something gate yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. it's a very good word for you know just in order to say scandal i prefer gate <laughs> yeah but we use gate for an embarrass a very embarrassing scandal yeah so gate is always a, a very embarrassing scandal. It's not just a mistake. It's a scandal. It's something that's unethical, illegal, uh, just preposterously outrageous. Teacher Lee, uh, yes, I know. Word. Here it is X gate happening in my country. Escape? X. I just can't say more. Okay. Just X. No, no, no. I will explain it later. Oh. That's so, it's a suff is. suffix gay, right? We use it as a suffix. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And and I think we will have more gates <laughs> soon when elections in the USA yeah. will start. <laughs> yeah, Putin, Putin gates, 99% support every however many years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, let's go on. So, Gerard, could you please help us with number three? Message, mm -hmm. message of human, humanity. 
What do you think is the episode's message about human nature and the ease which society can break down? Discuss how the ending of the episode reinforces challenges, your views on trust and community. Mm. Okay. Uh, um, humans uh, love to blame someone when something bad happens. I've seen that in many American movies, you know? They prefer blame someone, even this person, you know, is not the, the guilty. <laughs> but at least, you know, they have uh, someone to pinpoint and they get reassured that someone was punished, for, for instance, about a crime. So they rather prefer having someone punished that it's not, the, it's not fair, rather mm -hmm. than, no, than having no one to be punished. And here we see in this um, episode that all the time I, they're looking for someone to blame. About the about the uh, the outage, mm -hmm. and I don't and, think that it's only in the USA. I have seen this in many societies, right? We 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 like to blame someone. We like to put some responsibility on someone. I think more. I think I think I think it's more. I see that more in in American movies. You know, the, uh, to lynch people. You know, well, the mob lynch someone because okay, the guy is guilty. This guy killed this woman. I've seen that, that in many movies. In Spain, not that much. <laughs> it's in my country, it is easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I fear religion. He's a heretic. He's an infidel. Oh, my God. Run for your life. <laughs> Yeah, but my impression, I don't know if Sergei has the same uh, impression, but in my impression that in Russia, we always start with this, you know, every new boss start with blaming all boss that everything was made in incorrect manner. And now we are going to fix it, you know, but it will take time, but it's not my kind of, <laughs> it's not because of me, it's because everything was, was wrong before. Hmm. Biden still blames Trump for the border problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, many times, many, many, a lot of time passed, right? <laughs> okay, so what do you think about this uh, episode? Was it good, bad? Gerard, what do you think? Yeah, it was okay. Compared with uh, the invaders, what? <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Okay, and it's a nice segue <laughs> to the invaders. Mm -hmm. Sergei, Sergei, could you please start with the first one? Uh, initial encounter. Describe the woman's first encounter with the invaders. What does her reaction tell us about her character and the setting of the story? Uh, for me, this uh, lady uh, lives in uh, one, uh, one old house uh, uh, among the forest. Uh, uh, she didn't use the modern uh, <laughs> tools, modern uh, features, and uh, uh, for me, it uh, uh, looks like uh, the Middle Age uh, in England, maybe in uh, in Spain, and uh, the similar. Uh, she has she had she had the uh, similar uh, dress uh, like. Uh, uh, lady from the picture of uh, book of history in my childhood, and uh, he he looks old, maybe twenty five uh, or or twenty six lady, and for this time, it's my opinion, it's a old la uh, was an old lady, and uh, she didn't had uh, uh, she didn't have uh, a husband. I don't know why. Maybe uh, men went to the war. And uh, they uh, killed each other. And uh, she, uh, when uh, when you meet something strange uh, in your life, and from the middle, in the UFO, you I, I don't know how how to speak English UFO. Uh, we U, uh, U, Uf, UFO, right? UFO. Yeah. Uh, if you meet a UFO in the middle age, and uh, uh, that's why. Uh, different uh, galactics galactics uh, meet each other. Uh, I think uh, she had uh, the understandable reaction, but because uh, if I met uh, some uh, little UFO UFO in my in my house, uh, maybe I uh, had the similar reaction. Except my mobile phone, I would uh, I would 
uh, I would like, I would start to uh, make the video. Whoa, whoa, it's a movie <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, but I, but I think it's normal reaction, right? So you came into your room, let's say, and you see some unknown animal, right? What is the first reaction? Let's hit it, right? <laughs> let's see what will happen. Leila, do you agree? So what we do with, with such situation? One, I would do two things. One, open the door and run away. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing is that maybe I can't, I'm not sure. I would try to communicate because they are so cute. <laughs> Small. No, I, I don't they know. They didn't well, make me scary, you know. When I see something new, you know, a big spider or something unknown, you know. Uh, a don't big... tell me, cockroach. Cockroach or big Five hundred kilometers away. <laughs> I would not start communicating. I would start in to find something, you know, big to hit it. <laughs> so, <No>. An axe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, I would uh, do the same thing. I would just uh, lock uh, this uh, uh, thing and uh, find help because um, strange things uh, are always harmful uh, unless they prove the opposite. <laughs> and I'm not a big fan of insects or any small things. So uh, I believe I would seek help. I think it's an ancient reflex inside us, right? So if you see something unknown and it's small, okay, just kill it. If you see something unknown and it's big, okay, run away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move forward. Vova, could you help us with a second? Co conflict without words. Given the minimal d dialogue, how does the episode use visual storytelling and sound to convey the tension and conflict be between the woman and the invaders. There was only one invader, right? Invader. No, I think. No, not the one. Okay, okay. More than one, I think. Didn't she destroy a couple of them? And, and I, there no. were more. Okay, I, I, I probably I missed this. I missed that. I saw it was. Sure. Yeah. But I think she locked the door and then in her room mm -hmm. again. So. Okay, so when you watch this, did you feel the tension? Uh, <laughs> uh, the woman only uh, said, ah, 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 and nothing more. <laughs> okay, let's, let's learn some vocabulary for this. So she was yelling, right? screaming, what else? Uh -huh. Moaning, <laughs> crying, what else? So it was a moaning. Sorry, Lena. Sweating. I, I, do, I don't know this word. Grimacing. <laughs> Grimacing, yeah. So <laughs> mimicking, right? Maybe. What else? Mm -hmm. Sweat, I said, Ivan. Sweating. Mm -hmm. Sweating. But well, do, did you believe that, you know, this is a conflict that the lady is frightened by this thing? Yeah. Yeah? So, so it was... Because she... Uh... Didn't know uh, anything about electricity. Electricity, yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty simple house, right? And the episode I remember was started with tricky way, right? So it's just a usual house somewhere. So we think it's on the yours, as Sergey said, some medieval <laughs> time or something. Yeah. Okay, out in the country out in the countryside a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's. So, yeah, do you think we can find such a place now, let's say in Russia, you know, without any <laughs> uh, Yes, I think uh, because uh, we have uh, uh, some people who uh, uh, don't want to accept the modern life and uh, they uh, especially went to the forest and they lived without electricity, without <laughs> gas. Uh, they used only uh, primitive tools. They used wood. Uh, they used... Uh, uh, primitive uh, food and mm -hmm. but anyway sometimes they went to uh, to some city for giving the medicine um, yeah. yeah yeah so they if it's if their life is in danger they go into the civilization to get some medicine or advice or something nice one would you like to share something 
Uh, yes, uh, I wanted to say that my uh, father was an agriculture engineer. So he used to work for the government in, in uh, some projects uh, mm. where we used to live in places like this when I was uh, very little. Uh, so the electricity ha had uh, times, a uh, mm. few hours of the day, and uh, also water, uh, lots of mosquitoes. And the, the life there was very primitive. And my father used to follow those projects. And we uh, were with him. Uh, life was uh, very uh, awful there. Uh, and I don't know how people survive in such places, actually. <laughs> <laughs> As we know, I shared this story a few times. But I started my career as Lamberger. So I was <laughs> in a forest, in a tent, without electricity, without water, without something, for two or three months, and after that, I decided that math is not that hard. I should learn it, and why not find another job? <laughs> you were fine? You were fine living there? <laughs> no, I didn't like to live there, and the company <laughs> was very bad, I would say, because the company was a... Uh, it was a man who kind of accepts this destiny. You know, we live like barbarians, and we don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to develop themselves, so so I didn't like this company at, at all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sergey, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, in the modern society, people uh, tired uh, tired of information information noise, and they went to the small villages uh, from the big cities to animals to agriculture to lumberjack job uh, because uh, uh, they can't live in this uh, information noise because uh, due, due to the psychologists uh, uh, yeah I think there's a term for this it's downshifting right when yeah. you kind of making a regress in your life so you used to be used to live in big city and then you are in small village just to try to insulate yourself from the news and everything right? downshifting well, I tried this, it does not work <laughs> very well. Because at some time, you want to return, and there is a shock happen, right? And money as well, as well, as well yeah. Okay, Leila, could you please help us with number three? Number three, the perspective shift, right? Yep. How does the twist ending change your understanding of the episode? Discuss the themes of perspective and view of the unknown in relation to the final reveal. Oh, uh, I was going to say, okay, I thought she was brave because she was all alone in a cottage and uh, an isolated place. But when this happened, um, she behaved in such a way that I thought she was a... Uh, going to have a kind of heart attack or something like that so at the end we understood that these are not the aliens right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, she was an alien I, right was yes um i think we mustn't uh believe whatever we hear or see and also we must be strong enough to handle the situation. We should be the problem solvers, I think. Fear yeah. of the unknown. I've got the fear of the unknown, but I never, um, tr I mean, I try not to think about it a lot because, you know, from time to time, I live on my own at home. <clears throat> I don't watch vampire films. <laughs> 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 and, you know, there are some things, Ivan, but fear of unknown is everywhere in me. Yeah, you know, actually, I like it, this episode because of this twist. You know, I, I, I can I can name some examples from my real life. You know, so sometimes, let's say, I used to live in a big building block, and there was very few parking slots, and I was always irritated when I see that my neighbor took this parking slot. But then sometimes I see that it wasn't my neighbor uh man but someone who i know <laughs> some my, one my friend and i immediately changed my mind i said wow that's that's okay <laughs> nothing bad happened so it was kind of changing point of view right seeing that uh unpleasant guy doing this it was 
giving me irritation. Seeing that some, someone else doing this, it was totally okay for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can, I can, yeah? yeah, please go on, my friend. Well, and I know many examples like this, you know, just, you know, just make an example, give some news and change the, you know, Russia to USA, vice versa, <laughs> and read them, <laughs> and then switch back, you know, and you will, you will change your opinion, right, because of point of view. And I like how fast people can, you know, switch this. And also here, I thought that this sound and the atmosphere triggered her fears. Mm -hmm. I mean, she seems a very brave girl, woman, you know, just living on her own, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's not like that. I think we, we can talk about sympathy, right? So in the beginning of the movie, what so what are our sympathy? So we think that woman kind of protecting herself, right? And we yeah, think, yeah. so we, we tried, I don't know how about you, but I thought, well, it's a good if she will protect herself, right? So For it, example, Ivan, she just uh, climbed the ladder and mm -hmm. opened the roofs, whatever. I, I believe I couldn't do that. You know, I heard the strange noise. I would leave the house or cut it. I mean, she did that. Yeah, in the movies, they hear it in the dark forest. They hear a noise and they've got to go investigate, even though they know there's this dangerous animals out there. What's that noise? Let me walk deep into the dark woods and find out what that noise is. No, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I like in, the, in, in, the, in this movie they always say let's split into parts right I go there and you <laughs> stay here <laughs> yeah, so fine okay I, I'm not sure that we should uh, try to discuss fourth question because I think we already covered it right yeah okay let's skip it so nice one please I just want to say something uh, this theory shows that human beings are hostile in normal cases. They are uh, maybe exploring the outer space, but they are being hostile. They were, um, you know, trying to find out uh, the nature of this giant creature, the woman, uh, but uh, they were hurting her, uh, using the knife against her, and they were scaring her. They didn't show any peace message during their surveillance uh, journey. Mm -hmm. I think they are just messing up. I don't know. Uh, I have this feeling that the woman was a victim and they were just being hostile all the time. Yeah. So there was no any attempts to make peace, make communication or wrong. Yes. They were chasing her. That, that may be a plot hole. I'm not sure. If this was if these little robots were really a NASA probe sent into space to you know investigate new planets would they attack a giant inhabitant <laughs> with a knife come on i mean that wouldn't be their programming you know what i mean Yvonne? yeah, yeah. Really? i guess so, yes teacher because human beings tend to kill the unknown things so they can <laughs> study it it right <laughs> we have it dead we can study it later kill the giant kill the giant <laughs> yeah, but but I think teacher Lee has has a point. So it's it's no any kind of benefits to program it's mm -hmm. to start a war that you cannot win, right? Yeah. Well, what's the reason? <laughs> so just run away, Gerard? I think they weren't robots. They were astronauts. So they yes. look like robots, but they were humans with an astronaut suit. Yeah, um, I agree. Could be okay. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but they don't know that you know. They just told this woman, this poor woman, they, they scared this woman. What, what, what they did the specs. <laughs> yeah, so we can we can see the picture here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's... I think that's not an absolute. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Probably people inside little, you know, little, yeah. little <laughs> environmental suits. <laughs> they reminded also the robot from the movie, old movie, The Forbidden Planet. Do you remember, teacher Lee? Yeah, yeah, a little bit like that. We call that one Robbie the Robot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that could could make anything this robot yeah, very the useful little, the little rotating keys yeah <laughs> <laughs> the glass head. 
yeah for 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 me this robot looks like the robot from the uh toy story uh <laughs> from, from yeah. the car cartoon yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair, famous one. We we should we should watch the story one one day because it was a. I I I I know that many people make reference to this toy story. Maybe maybe it's interesting to. Mm -hmm. to, to yeah. yeah. Only number one, not number two. Number two is woke and horrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> number one's okay. Okay. Good. Okay, that's all about inviters. I think so. We will make slides later. Let's finish with living doll. So simple yes. one, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Gerard, could you please start with number yes. one? Yes. Introduction to the conflict. How is the conflict between Eric, the stepfather, and Tolkitina, the doll <laughs> introduced? <laughs> Discuss how this conflict escalates throughout the episode. Okay. So the mother, um, the, the wife of the, the Eric's wives, bought this doll for her daughter. Uh, without consulting her husband. Mm -hmm. And he was very disappointed. He was a, a grumpy guy. And it looked like the talky Tina doll that could talk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but like it was alive somehow. I'm a talky and, Tina and I love you. Yes, uh, with a. With the, the the daughter was very kind, was normal. But when he was she was alone, the dog was alone with the father with Eric. Mm -hmm. She talked to 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 him and said that she didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me remind me maybe this uh, episode was inspiration of the Chucky's movies. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Where Ch where Chucky came from, yeah. Yeah. Yes, the, the idea of Chucky at all being evil being. And this this book, Stephen, what, what, what was his name? Uh, it, right? It was uh, about clown. clown, clown. Yeah. It seems something similar. I read it a long time ago, but I think there is something similar. Yes, I read the book when I was 50 or 40 years ago. It was a very scary book. It was very scary. And, <laughs> and what you'll find out is you watch these Twilight episodes series is this was back in the 1960s yes. and you'll see ideas that movies were made from like chucky you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and you'll see the old actors that became famous later hmm. yeah so we can say that it's kind of uh, idea creators right so they create ideas yeah, yeah. that later yeah. develop it into some movies or some yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting yeah Jacques, what do you think about this stepfather how would you characterize him? Characterize him. Okay, like uh, he looked like he was disappointed, unhappy. Maybe he couldn't have children. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was that was something, you know, um, a conflict between he and her wife. And like her wife uh, thought that he didn't upset uh, the stepdaughter. I remember he was uh, blaming his wife that we cannot get own children or something like this. So it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you remember? Yeah. 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 But uh, what, what's to blame if the, his wife had a daughter? If she doesn't have children, maybe it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. most of the time, maybe many times it's a woman, the, you know, the one who has problems. But sometimes men can have also problems. Yeah, but what what I see, I see that he was kind of a jerk, right? He was an unpleasant guy. He was blaming yeah. everyone. He was so I can understand why Tolkitina does not love him, right? So <laughs> we, we can see that from the first moment. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in in the past wasn't that common, you know, a man marrying with a woman that has already children, has children. Mm -hmm. and nowadays is the more the most normal thing. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I think it's nothing special, right? So it's just oh, yes. yeah, <laughs> not, not anymore. Yeah. Okay. Sergey, could you help us with number two? Technology and fear. How does the episode use uh, the talking doll to explore fears associated with technology? Discuss 
whether the spheres are still relevant today. <clears throat> I think uh, for uh, those times, the uh, uh, talking doll uh, was a new something because uh, uh, it was a new, it was a, a very expensive, I think, uh, because it's not unusual toy. And uh, I think uh, engineers uh, could put uh, some uh, phrase, some phrases uh, inside the doll and uh, these phrases could uh, switch on on the uh, bottom or uh, or if you uh, rotate the doll uh, in russia we have uh, uh, some uh, joke about uh, big vessel uh, which uh, transportation uh, the similar dolls who switch on and switch off uh accepted to rotation and when the vessel uh uh rotate and uh, a lot of dolls immediately uh simultaneously uh speak something oh hello dolly <laughs> hello and the uh, <laughs> and guys who uh who uh work on this vessel uh was uh, crazy about it <laughs> yeah uh, but Siri, you know i I think you're right. So we are talking about 60s, right? And there is a speaking toy. So probably it's like AI now, right? It's like chat GPT now. Yep. So it's it's something yep. that scare people, right? We are scared of this technology. So will it replace us? Will it smarter? Will it be smarter than I am? Right? So something like that. In the, in the old days, the only doll that had a moving part was as as Sergey said, if you hold the doll vertical, the eyes would be open. If you laid the doll horizontal, the eyes would close. Yeah, yeah. That was it. That was all that moved on a doll a long time ago, the eyes. So to have it speak, this was unheard of back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so it's it's interesting, right? So it's really fear of technology, right? Fear of something modern or something unknown or something maybe powerful, powerful. But it, it's it's inside the doll. Interesting choice, right? So inside a small doll, not a huge robot, not, I don't know, not a lion, but just a small doll. Interesting choice, I would say. How do you call the mechanism? Mechanism clockwork? This mechanism to talk that the doll, the doll talks clockwork? A kind of recording, I think, recording machine. I, I, the, the speech, or are you talking about the mechanical movement? Yeah, the mechanical movement. We would just, we would normally just call it the mechan, you know, mechanical parts or mm -hmm. machine. But usually, um, usually there is a spring inside, right? We call it a spring, and you have a key to make attention with this. Uh, wind, wind it up. Yep. Wind, wind the up. winder. Mm -hmm. A wind, we thought we call it wind up a toy mm -hmm. wind up. using a a key mm -hmm. like a I, small clocks mm -hmm. wind up yeah. a clock yeah we call that a yeah, key yeah. you turn the key to wind it up mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then it winds yeah, I, down i used to have one when i was a child <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Remember? Re watch, you need to used to yeah watches used to have to wind those <laughs> we didn't have batteries a long time ago no watch <laughs> batteries yeah. Sergey, yeah. please. In Russian toys, in Russian dolls, uh, we used uh, uh, a primitive uh, gyroscopes. Uh, yes, when yeah. you r rotate dolls and uh, uh, electric contacts uh, uh, make to together uh, uh, according to the uh, gyroscope, and dolls uh, speak something. Oh, I want to sleep. And when you rotate again, and she opens the eyes. And she told something else. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. No, I'm awake. <laughs> Mama. Mama. Gyroscope. Right? Gyroscope. Gyroscope. Yeah. Gyroscope. And I remember it was very popular in, in Russia when I was young to have a doll that is vertical, but you cannot kind of lay it down. It always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> so it's it has a heavy what was the word for this prop heavy basement and light top so and we have a special name for this and toddlers ne like like to play with... <laughs> yeah in, in russia in russian literal translation it's something that you cannot lay something like like this <laughs> and toddlers like, like it. Yeah. yeah 
like ships. Ships are bottom heavy so that they won't fall over sideways. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same idea. <laughs> and, you know, without any battery, without any winding up mechanism, it works forever with a toddler. She, they try to put it down, it, it comes back, and, you know, it's perpetual mobility. <laughs> yeah, like your Matryoshka dolls or whatever you call them. Yeah, you know, yeah. they roll back to the vertical <laughs> position. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's skip family dynamics, dynamics, because I don't understand what AI wants from us. And <laughs> <laughs> so they, they were not happy about each other. each other. We mentioned this. And actually, actually, I don't understand this question at all, number four. <clears throat> consequences of ill will. Do you understand? Ill will is hostility. Mm -hmm. Bad intention. So the the man, the, the father and the doll had ill will against each other. So the consequences were conflict, right? I see. I see. And hatred and and violence and you know. Yeah. Resentment. Yeah. Yeah. He tried to kill a doll, I remember. He tried to <laughs> <laughs> de, what was the word for this? De, how how we call it when we behead? Behead, yeah. yeah. <laughs> decapitate. Decapitate, yeah. He tried to decapitate the doll, which is pretty strange. Okay, well, what about... Yeah. Remember Wednesday? Wednesday was always decapitating her dolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With a guillotine. <laughs> okay, Bo, well, could you please answer number five? Koha and reality. In what ways does living doll blend elements of horror with real life issues? <laughs> Discuss how this combination affects the message of the episode. Yeah, what is the message for? Uh, that you should behave <laughs> when talking Tina is around. <laughs> no, I don't think this is a message. Do you agree, guys? I don't think. I think the message is, you know, if you are um kind of if you are negative to someone you will get the same right it's like you you're getting what you what you're giving so it's how i understand this yeah, yeah? What goes good? around comes around right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly we, we, oh, uh, we, ha we have an expression ivan uh p parents have an expression children are made to be seen Mm -hmm. Not heard. <laughs> that see. means they're made to look at, but they're not. Nobody wants them to speak. They're, they're pretty to look at, but we don't want them to talk. Children are meant to be seen, not heard. So this guy's opinion was the doll was meant to be seen, not heard. <laughs> I, I I I I truly understand this because my smallest boy he's very talkative, and sometimes when we walk together. <laughs> Sometimes he he look at me and say, "Father, should I stop talking with you because I can see that you are tired?" <laughs> yeah. Why, Dad? Why, Dad? Why? Because blah blah blah. Why? 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 Yeah. They are so sweet. Come on, Ivan. Well, it's sweet, Leila. But when it's you know five hours straight, you need a break. You know, you need something. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan, last year they uh, my friends bought me a toy, a dog, okay? Mm -hmm. This dog was talking. If you push the button, he starts saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. And uh, that day, my boss <clears throat> called me to give me the new program. And the dog was, the toy was in my bag. I went to his room and uh, he gave me the program. And suddenly I think I hit the switch. I don't know. The dog started saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. <gasps> I was so embarrassed. And some so, some dolls have a pull string. You pull the string and, and that's like winding it up. You pull the string and it'll say, I think I'm sleepy. I want to go to bed. <laughs> or music plays teacherly. Yeah, music, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was the old days. That was the old days. We don't have that anymore. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we have got nothing in this crazy world nowadays. For me, uh, I, I don't like this 
when those say the same words for hours. Yeah. Okay. Either uh, they speak something else or they they remain silent. Yeah, repeating things they 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 make you crazy, right? So yeah. I'm talking to you and I love you very much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Exactly. Yeah. I remember my boys used to have some kind of cars they produce, not even so sounds like melody, but it's a short kind of paragraph of this melody. It's again and again and again, and it drives me crazy. Yeah, I cannot tolerate it. I want to stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, Mesma, please. Uh, I think uh, the message of this series is that that when uh, a person has hard times, he starts to see that everything is against him, uh, even a helpless doll. So <laughs> I think this is all, uh, that was all imagination. It wasn't horror, she wasn't talking, it's a doll, I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. He was just having hard times because I have a feeling that he was <clears throat> unemployed, maybe, because he was at home at the daylight. Uh, and also he had no kids. So he was stressed, having having hard times. This is why, I believe. Yeah. So he was spreading the hate, and he was giving hate. Right. It was what we said before. Yeah. Yes. It's like the Ivan has said. You know, negative things attract negative things. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I don't know. You know, there are many people who believe this, who believe in karma, you know, that you if you spread positive things, you will get back, you know, the good things. If you spread negative things, I I don't know. I, I have I have seen many exceptions from this rule. <laughs> I, I have seen many terrible people who spread terrible things and never get anything bad back. So I don't know if I should believe this. Uh -huh. But you feel that energy, you know? Well, when if... so I, I, I would agree that if we if someone is always positive, I tend to answer with positive. So I, I tend to. It's very hard for me to break this kind of trend, right? If someone is kind and positive to you, and you without any reason cannot just you know be negative. So I, I believe this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, how will we rate this episode, Sergey? Which is your favorite one? <laughs> I I I like so much uh, the episode about monsters on the uh, on, on the city. I yeah. like because uh, uh, we could see a lot of uh, motives, a lot of uh, types of behavior, and uh, it looks like uh, uh, true. Because sometimes uh, if people don't do, uh, don't understand something, they uh, want to uh, uh, accuse accuse each other. Yeah, each other, right? blame blame each other. Blame blame each other. Yeah. 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 Essentially, wrote the rational with the irrational, right? You you behave irrational way when you don't have a yours under you like don't understand right something operational yeah good one okay let's uh, make some slides we have time i think for this uh maple street right and and <laughs> Nesma, you had a good point about this guy this guy can i say narrator right a narrator uh, or a host he was always with a cigarette as Nesma mentioned but <laughs> Yeah, in the 60s, it was, you know, I, I remember that in my time, when I was young, everyone was uh, with a cigarette everywhere, like in a, in a real airplane, in a car, in a train. So it was very normal at that time. Yeah, even women. Even women. You, you're ubiquitous. <laughs> ubiquitous. You're yeah. ubiquitous. You see it everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You, you would not believe, but nowadays it's prohibited on Russian television to have a cigarette. And sometimes they blur old movies. Not often, not often, but sometimes when it's in the day time kind of show on, on TV that children can see that they try to blur this uh, cigarettes on yeah. the Yeah, uh, we movies. don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's that's how we started. We made it illegal for cigarette companies to advertise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was what we did. We said you can sell cigarettes, 
but you can't advertise them to young young people. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that, that, was, that was our step, yeah. Yeah, let's help it will work, you know. Whenever I know that in my life, whenever I go to the doctor, first thing they ask, do you smoke? <laughs> so <laughs> probably you know, you know, pe you know, cigarettes, people know cigarettes give you lung cancer, cigarettes will reduce shorten your life by 10 years or more. And okay. people still buy cigarettes and smoke them. It's like, come on, people. Yeah, very strange. I agree. Okay, um, let's start with this one. Um, Nesma, could you help us, please? I can see pavement, some trees, a car, an old one, and uh, a man pushing a uh, what do you call it? cart. Uh, uh, the yeah. yeah. I, I remember the um, word wheelbarrow. Is it a wheelbarrow, officially? It looks Cart. a little big. Wheelbarrows are usually kind of... One wheel, big, right? Kind of, you know, one wheel in the front, two in the back. It's usually kind of round. It has round corners. Yeah. But this one might be more of a a, a leaf box or something, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But okay. wheelbarrow, yeah, you're right. Wheelbarrow is three-wheeled, yeah. Okay. I don't know. I heard some people call it automobile. Maybe this is French. Automobile. I don't know. That's, that's, French. A, that's, that's the that's the formal name for a car. A car is an auto or an automobile. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In Turkish, Nesma, people say yeah. automobile. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, you can yeah. say automobile if you want, but nobody calls them automobiles. We call them cars. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> automobile car <laughs> this uh, shape of course the, that old brand we call it automobile mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that, yeah we, we kind of generally call that a model t the old original ford car was called model t or model a mm -hmm. so if you say a model t people know this old kind of car <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you just have to you just have to start it by cranking the engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I also can see clean streets, no beggars, no crackers, no, you know, lots of green areas here, lots of trees. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I was about to ask Teacher Lee about this Maple Street name. Do you think Maple Street is something, you know, Something very common in every city, so it's just me and a usual street. Am I right? Could be. Yeah, maple is a kind of tree. Mm -hmm. And we name our streets after trees, animals, flowers, anything. Mm -hmm. So maple, maple street, orange street, apple street. Yeah, it's just a, a, a typical descriptive name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it's what I saw. You know, in Russia we always have builders street. We we like professions. We like professions to use to <laughs> builder streets, farmer streets, something like this. So it's yeah. and, and, and there are a lot of jokes about this. If I say that I live on builder street number three, it's mean it could be in any town. In every town in Russia, there will be <laughs> street like this. <laughs> yeah, usually. Every town used to have a main street, the, the mm -hmm. main street that everything built up along. So every city has a main street, usually. Yeah. Usually in Russia, main street is always Lenin Street because of Lenin. Because yeah. <laughs> because yeah. of Lenin. <laughs> now, we have an idiom, an idiom to live on easy street. That means you're rich. Mm -hmm. You see. got no worries. No problems. Everything's <laughs> perfect or wonderful. Yeah, you know, we all want to live on easy street, but few of us do. <laughs> I see. Nesma, can you see this guy laying under the car? Oh, yes. <laughs> I was trying to fix something here. Yeah. Old cars, they always, uh, I mean, that technology always uh, meant you to, to do something, you know, to check something, to check your oil, to check you. I, I remember when I had a first car, I, I spent more time under it than inside it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because it was cheap and trusty and everything. <clears throat> I okay. don't do those uh, stuff. I just tell my husband, I hear sounds here and there. And he just <laughs> do the rest. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that might have been, was he pushing the ice cream wagon? Was that what he was pushing in that previous one? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's the ice cream man. Okay. Ice cream. Yeah, we can see his uh, cat. <laughs> we call it the ice cream wagon. Yeah. Well, well I, I have seen such uh, wagons in Turkey very, very, many times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could I it mean, be? Yeah. This is, again, the same place, right? Yep. And the uh, ice cream man has got his uniform and uh, he looks very hygienic and clean and uh, oh what about the boy what is he doing there with a yeah. kind of uh, baseball so, bat i see there's nothing to do with the ice cream right yeah. no he's just holding it he came over to get some ice cream he was playing ball yeah. Did they, you know, in Turkey, maybe Ivan knows that, that there is a kind of stick like that, and they store ice cream with it. Yeah, a little wooden stick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I miss those. And, yeah. And this yeah. Um, is something new for me, you know? Um, so one boy there are not, one boy one, have have seen these in my country. This game? No, this kind of ice cream. Yeah, there are many people, and they they made it like a show for tourists. You know, they usually you probably have seen this on, on the YouTube. So they give you an ice cream, and they immediately trick you and give the, it back. I know this is called Marash ice yeah. cream. This yeah. is something different. Actually, um, I don't know who, whether to use this word is correct. They uh, smash the ice cream. And it becomes so, how can I say, sticky. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, uh, it's similar how you chop, you, you don't know, your meat, making meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they put the ice cream on the top of the shelf and and kind of heat it, heat it again and again and again. That it's kind of changed the uh, shape and characteristics. So it's it became very sticky and very more solid i would say so they, yeah, they yeah, yeah. yeah but so it's, e it's not so it's my easier. yeah teacher sorry so it's easier to eat yeah 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 oh yeah I we wish just I could uh, send you i wish we, i could send you <laughs> yeah we just we don't do that we just we just stick the wood <laughs> spoon into it and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Italy, this is something special from the south part of turkey and uh, yeah. okay. this is uh, organic, I can say. Yeah, they, they oh, make okay. it. They make it at the same at the same time, like cold, right, and soft, right, and soft. So it's it's kind of soft. It's is it a word malleable? So you can shape it whenever you want. Yeah. Now we we do have soft serve ice cream that comes out of a a a, a dispenser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love those more. Now that's we call that soft serve. That's Soft ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. This is not my favorite one. Did you like it a lot? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What what boys are having, Leila? Do you know their names for this? Sorry, what boy? Yeah, what there are three boys and everyone has some equipment, right? Every one of them have some equipment. So um the one on the right, mm -hmm. um, he has a kind of Mask. Mask. Ah, it is in between, right? Middle, mm. you yeah. mean. Mm -hmm. Mask. The other guy on the right, um, a kind of cricket glow. Glow. Something like that. Yeah. Glove. 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 Okay. And so um, one, it's a bet, right? A bet? Yeah. But... Yep. So the you got a, the bat for the batter. Mm -hmm. Behind behind the batter is the catcher. He catches the ball if the batter misses it. So he's got a mask so the ball doesn't hit him in the face. Okay, <laughs> that's why I protect the mask. Yeah. Okay. And so then the leather glove is to catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
It's very, very American thing. So uh, it's uh, it's almost unknown for the rest of the world. <laughs> yep. So we we mostly watch it in the movies. Now, let me mention to you that uh, in the old days, you could wear driving gloves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that your hands didn't, you know, maybe the steering wheel was rough or hot yeah. in summer. So your gloves protected your hands from a sticky or dirty steering wheel. When you take your gloves off, where do you put those? You put those in the glove compartment. Mm -hmm. So every car has a little box that you can open up and close. We call that the glove compartment. Literally, glove, okay? Like love, glove compartment. So every car has a glove compartment. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. nobody puts gloves in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I remember these two guys. These two guys they are kind of making an experiment, right? They are watching people on Maple Street when they blaming each other. And I would say that they have a uniform, some kind of futuristic uniform, not from yours. So maybe they are aliens or something. And behind them there is a I don't know what this gang uh, way, gangway to, to the ship. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just I remember. Just yeah. tears, and they have something that reminds me, uh, I don't know, a tablet, right? So some kind of monitor, some kind of uh, device to to see what is happening on. Yeah, and they say people are people, right? Uh, so they kind of make an experiment and <laughs> confirm that the everything as expected. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, in in addition, you 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 can see the earnings uh, inside the earth, and uh, uh, this earnings looks like the modern earnings. Yeah, so yeah. it's it, identical. Yeah, you're talking about these headsets, right? Or how we call it? Headset. Yeah. 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 So the the guy on the left and right, they have a black uh, small earpiece of of the headset. Yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, Please see my uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> like you. <yeah. laughs> I'm an alien, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, let's switch to another. And boy, well, did you do it by yourself? This picture with mm -hmm. no, it was here. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the doll. Nesma, would you like to talk about the doll? <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. So, <laughs> can I here? Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to me or to Vuba? Yeah, that's my talking to you. I, I mean, uh, which picture should I should I choose? This one or uh, this? One? Which one you do you prefer? All right, let's have this one. So he's trying to behave the doll because he feels like she's evil, mm -hmm. and he is a kind of a, a garage or basement. Maybe he's got some uh, tools here. Mm -hmm. um, be hid, yes. And um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's kind of a store, maybe because there are some bottles behind him, some uh, tools, equipment, even the lamp, the light here. It uh, reminds me of a basement or something. In the old days, men used the garage as a work shed. They'd have oh. a workbench there, a vice grip, tools. So this might be his garage or a basement that he converted into a a workshop. Yep. Yeah. And how we call this uh, this device? Is this circular circular saw? I would say circular saw. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or buzz this... saw. Mm -hmm. And on the left, it's probably another machinery that makes holes, right? So you put the lever. And it makes a hole kind of with a drill, hand drill. Or yeah, a drill, a drill press. Yep, drill press makes holes. Drill press. Okay. Sergey? Uh, we have a joke uh, about people who work with circle, the saw, and uh, the oh, similar yeah. type of uh, uh, machine that they have uh, less uh, fingers than usual people. <laughs> <laughs> It's, yeah. it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He could just uh, have thrown the doll. 
He doesn't have to torture it like this. Yeah, just pull the head off, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, pull your head off. And they changed the picture because we did not let Nesma talk about this picture. Well, when men see a garage, uh, Nesma, we cannot, you know, shut <laughs> shut down. We, we start to speak about this garage. You know, it's it's a it was a now modern people like, like young people they don't have this garage. They don't have a hobby to make something. But for me, I still like to have these tools. I still like to have a place where I can do something. And I know that Sergey is a big fan of. Uh, handwork as well so, so. yes yeah i agree yeah. in the it's old a... days the garage was the original man cave yeah a <laughs> temple right a temple you go there to be yeah. to be a man you know without all this yeah. you know, yeah. things around yeah. okay it, it was a club for for men club yeah. 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 good in my neighborhood uh, I live in a poor neighborhood, so in my neighborhood, people open up the garage and they put outside chairs inside the garage and they use them <laughs> like their patio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they put a TV in there and they sit in chairs inside the garage watching TV and drinking like it's an outside patio. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> yeah, I still I still remember it was the same in, in my in my young age. But it was a little bit different because we don't have gar garages close to our buildings to, because it's, we live in buildings blocks usually, so we don't have place. Yeah, yeah. And it's a separate place, separate place when uh, in the town men have their caves, you know. And you go there and it's like have a masculine club so you can talk to anyone. If you don't have any tool, <laughs> you're just asking for this tool, you know, and... And they always drink together, you know, starting in the early morning, you know, and they go, they give you advices uh, in, in in a bunch. So, so how to do things? So it's a men's club. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> we never had that. Yeah. Okay. Nice. My change the picture, you know, to let you talk a little bit. <laughs> Could you? Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> I can see a woman. Uh, she's wearing weird stuff like she she's very primitive and uh, she's living in a yacht no no it's a I don't remember the word it's a very small house mm -hmm. made of wood and she has almost nothing um she she doesn't she doesn't seem to take in care of herself like a woman. <laughs> nothing in her face her hair is just yeah. you know tied like that no uh she living alone no makeup yes oh uh, i guess that's all yeah she, she doesn't have any makeup but i think her hair is a uh, curly can i say curly or curly house curly no curly. Uh, she's it just... looks str straight to me yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she doesn't oh. take care of her Appearance generally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't take care of her looks or appearance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe she's uh, just from another standards of beauty, right? Maybe that is a beauty for these giants. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you live alone, you don't need to dress up, right? You don't need lipstick. You don't need eye makeup. If you live alone, not yeah. for women. Really. No... <laughs> Not really, huh? Okay. No, we can we can wear makeup in the middle of the night when go nowhere, just staying at house and doing nothing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yes, I think it's cultural thing. Not in Berlin, you know. In Berlin, in Germany, if I see a woman with makeup, I can start speaking Russian with her without asking her where she is from. <laughs> Because German people, they don't use makeup. They don't care about, you know, about the look. So, so it's, it's very interesting. Uh, another cultural difference is in America, uh, American women generally don't dress up. You know, they go to the grocery store in a sloppy dress, you know, flat shoes, no makeup. They don't, you know, hair in curlers. It's horrible. But in Russia, the stereotype was that Russian women always dressed up real nice lipstick fancy dress high heels 
just to go to the grocery store. And it's not a not stereotype. It's something that we with Sergey used to. You know, we we think that woman looks like that always. So when we go to Germany or something, we feel like we are aliens on another planet. You know? oh, oh no, you lived in my country as well. Like Nesma said, you know, a woman should take care of her appearance. Yeah. Women are always on show. Huh? <laughs> but I guess a Russian woman is very known, uh, especially in, in Egypt. When we say uh, she is Russian, uh, this means she's, she's so amazing. She's so beautiful. She's so <laughs> hot. She's wearing makeup 24 7. She's, uh, you know. So, Not in America. In America, all everyone's ugly. I never see a pretty woman in America. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. So sad. <laughs> Nesma and Lila, I think it's it's kind of put a lot of obligation on Russian women, you know. So probably they are not happy that society expects from them always look like an actress, you know, on a on a ceremony. So probably it's a burden for them. Yeah. Um, your wife, you ought to know, Ivan. Your wife should tell you, right? You ought to know the answer to that. <laughs> Sergey? Yeah, and the, and the additional problem with the uh, beautiful appearance of the Russian women, uh, they spend a lot of time for this, and sometimes uh, you have to not enough uh, time for uh, going to the theater, but uh, you have to stay inside the home. And please, uh, go, go. We have to, um, okay, uh, five minutes, five ten minutes, and they uh, put some uh, something on, the, on their face, but uh, it takes a lot of time for yeah. making beautiful appearance. Yeah, I can. Let's I can go. go. Yeah, I, I can need go. thirty minutes. <laughs> I can confirm when you when you make kind of a a warning uh, hour before. It's too early. It's it's too it's too late <laughs> for, for, for your wife. <laughs> she says no. We don't go to the theater. We have only one hour, so I I would not be ready. <laughs> oh man! Oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bova, could you please describe this picture? Yeah, I like this. Um, what is the name for uh, space? Space suit. Yeah. yeah, space suit. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> uh, oh. so they thought uh, uh, the future in the ah. future uh, people will fly in this. Yeah, they will be they, they will wear this uh, suits, right? Space suits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a uh, how in sixties they saw what is a space suit is, right? So <laughs> <laughs> more than one, yeah. Yeah. But in sixties we already have space program, right, teacher? So in sixties we already have uh, I think Sergey, what was uh, Kennedy was the first one to go to the moon. Before that we didn't really have Sputnik, mm -hmm. you know, Sputnik was the first space device yeah. right so that was the very 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 beginning yeah, yeah. but it's it looks more like diving suit for me than space yeah, yeah. a deep sea <clears throat> diving suit they're hard because of all the pressure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. not too much but he's he's and, armored right he's armored he has some kind of laser or something and if you think about it because of the size of these people and the planet the planet's probably huge and has high gravity. Maybe. So this yeah. so the air pressure is probably very high. So if you were a little person on this <laughs> giant planet, probably the air pressure would be so great it would be <laughs> like you were at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it's it's it seems really funny for for modern kind of standards, this uh, picture is, <laughs> is, is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when it's hard, when the suit's metal stiff like that, it's hard to walk, right? You, yeah. you walk like this. <laughs> Tisha, how would we, would we call this injury? Is it a blast or something? So it's made by laser or some weapon? They look like warts, but we would probably call them whelps. Whelps. It's some, some injury, right? Some Yeah. Yeah, when you when you get burned or, or hit and the, the skin swells up, we call that a whelp. Wow, good, good, yeah. good to know. Okay, the last one. <laughs> the twist. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think there is something to describe. So well, it was number one, right? It was their first attempt. 
<laughs> yeah. That was space probe number one. Oh, well, no, it's not. Ah, yes, number one, exactly. Yeah. It, yeah, and teacher, is it O, right? It's underscored O? Correct. Yeah. N with an underscore O means it's an abbreviation for number. I see. I see. Sergey, so I don't have a picture for you. <laughs> Only, I don't know what to do. Only this one. <laughs> now, this this actor, uh, Layla, his name is Telly Savalas. Is that Turkish? No, <clears throat> no. Um, I don't know where he is from, teacher. Bulgarian? Could be, a, could be he, Greek. Greek, mm -hmm. okay. He's very famous old movie star. Ball, he was the first bald movie star, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so bro was a stand -up I, I will movie. check on the net. Could be Greek. Because of his surname, I thought that. He doesn't look American to me. I don't know. <laughs> no, he's not American. He's a foreign actor. Oh, yeah. Let me look while you're talking. He was the first <clears throat> bald actor that I remember. Yeah. And Bova probably don't understand what is in his hand. Oh, do you know what it is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a phone, right? So it's a so you have a phone on your table and this is a kind of removable part. I don't know how we call it, uh, just a headset maybe. <laughs> and you, <laughs> it's, it's an old question. Uh, do you understand why this wire is curled? Why it's <laughs> Because it's- Literally, it... can I say something? Uh -huh. Ivan, am I interrupting you? No, please, please. Leila, please go. Cut now, Ivan. Yeah, I, I had a problem with that. Yeah, bad please. connection. Leila, please go on. There we go. Ah, uh, he's American, teacher. Yeah. Nationality, American. <laughs> well, he may be American, but with the, you, you're sure? I thought I would have sworn he was from another country. Okay. Yes, I, we, okay. we had the, the similar t telephones. <laughs> telephones. Maybe uh, he was American. Now we he's call it the, an actor and he's a singer. Okay. And, um, singer? Wow. I never heard him <laughs> sing. Okay. Right. Yeah, the old <laughs> phones had a handset and a receiver. Uh, receiver. You pick up the handset, talk, and put it on the receiver. Yeah. yeah. Very good. <clears throat> and you had the rotary dial. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> is real, real. So, so it's many. Joke. So many funny videos on YouTube when they give this telephone, old one, to modern young people, and they try to figure out what what they can do with this rotary disc. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> not not obvious. Yeah. Oh, and when you and when you miss dial, you gotta hang up and start all over again. <laughs> Seven <laughs> click 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 nine click 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 click. Oh God. Yeah, very funny. Took a took a minute just to dial <laughs> yeah okay thank you very much for coming thank you very much for this uh, discussion i will share more thank you. Thank i will you. i will hope they will be good but i'm <laughs> i cannot promise this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you only got 30 minutes you can't make a good show in 30 minutes you know <laughs> thank you, good, yeah. bye thank bye you. everybody bye bye, bye bye thank you very much bye. for discussing bye. have a good day